What's going on guys? My name is Chajo and welcome to another anime workout. This week, the Baki workout. As some of you guys know, I am a personal trainer. That's why I'm doing this series, but also I'm an MMA fighter. And there was one particular anime that really got me motivated to be an MMA fighter when I was like, I think it was around the time I was 17 was when I watched this anime and it was Baki the Grappler. Not the new school Baki you see on, on Netflix. That's, that's a whole different thing. Um, it's the same, it's a continuation of the same story. Um, which that's awesome too, but I'm talking about the original Baki the Grappler. Um, I watched that show when I was probably 17, 18, um, but it caught my attention because it was about MMA, uh, or it was about grappling, which is like, it's basically MMA. It's like, it's like fighting, but no holds bar. So you can do, you can kick in the nuts, you can poke in the eye, you can bite, you can do all that stuff. But I remember watching that show when I was like 17 and thinking, God, this motivates me so much like to go out and start like actually training to be an MMA fighter. I had been doing MMA for like four years before that, like on and off doing jujitsu. I did some striking back then, but not much. It was I was mainly a ground game guy. And that's the show that really motivated me to just start training super, super, super hard because all that show is, is training. It's awesome, it gets you so motivated, man. I'm going to go ahead and get ready to go to the gym because it is gonna involve some heavier lifting. Hopefully you guys will enjoy this little week-long workout program. Make sure you guys leave a like down below um, to help make me make sure that you guys are enjoying the content. But let's go get this workout in. All right, guys, done with the workout. I've got a protein bar for post-workout. It was a great workout. That was a two-hour workout, and I still got to do the second part tonight, uh, all the MMA stuff. That was great. It took about two hours to do everything. Uh, I, I went ahead, like I said, I added yoga in. Shut up, Sora, I'm talking. I went ahead and added yoga in just because I wanted to make sure I'm getting more flexible because I've been feeling really tight. You know, when I'm sitting there editing all these videos, I do sit down for a long amount of time, and that can actually affects like it's called the muscles called your piriformis it's in your hips it's basically your hip muscles as far as like my mma and my kicking and stuff goes my jujitsu as well it, it'll affect that drastically so i've been doing a lot more yoga i'm um, trying to incorporate that as well uh the workout was fantastic it, it really just brings me back to like how i used to work out back when i was doing getting ready for my mma fight i actually worked out very similar to this except i didn't split it up uh back when i had a lot more time before i did youtube i would work out for like three hours at a time you know it was it was the like for the three months leading up to my fight um when i got down to my lowest body fat percentage which was like seven and a half percent i would do three hour workouts like and then every other day uh, one day would be focused on weight training and then I would do MMA training and then one day would be focused on entirely MMA training uh, and cardio-esque stuff. So that's kind of how I would train. The only difference with this one, it's a little bit more evened out every day. So I'm doing weight training every day and I'm just splitting the workouts up so I can focus on the MMA stuff later. Um, and I really like it. So I might even, after I get done doing a lot of these programs, I'm going to do a lot of these programs for you guys. But one day whenever I decide to like kind of just start focus on other types of fitness videos maybe. Um, I might just stick with the Baki style program because I really, really enjoy that program. It's intense, I'm not gonna lie. I wouldn't recommend it for someone who's just starting out at all. In fact, I wouldn't recommend it for anybody who hasn't been doing weight training or any type of like working out for more than two plus years. It's, it's just intense. Another thing I forgot to mention, uh, I, I completely forgot the warm up is uh, it's hit. It's a hits 20 minutes of hit training with sprinting. So before I did any of the lifting I did 20 minutes of hit training, which was all so by the time I was started doing my bench press and stuff I was already sweating pretty damn bad So that's another aspect to it the intensity is at the beginning and then they just kind of wrap it up with weight training And then at the end they make you do calisthenics, which is just a whole lot of volume, which I love I love high volume training But I'm gonna get this in me and then I'm gonna go ahead and film tonight's workout because I figured what I'll do since it is MMA training every night I figured I'll go over some combos and stuff some different types of MMA training that I do and how I'm gonna switch it up and I figured I would go and review some of that stuff with you guys uh, just mainly so I can show you guys kind of the stuff I do with my MMA training whenever I don't have anyone else to train with and I figured it'd make good content so we're gonna do that but I'm gonna get this in me and then I'll see you guys tonight for the MMA training workout number two I've already been going for I don't know maybe 10 minutes 
Uh, since we did chest and triceps mainly today, we're going to be focused on some boxing, uh, mainly just because that's mainly arms. We're not going to focus on kicks today. So what I'm going to do all week is I'm going to be showing you guys just a few different things to kind of like show you some boxing tricks if you're wanting to get into it. Something I do whenever I'm training, what I'm focusing on um, when I'm hitting on this bag. Um, boxing wise today, I'm working on the different defenses. So uh, I have two main defenses and then one variation of one of those uh, that I kind of make it I kind of put it in its own field as a defensive stance. Um, so we're gonna be going over <laughs> peekaboo style stance. So peekaboo style, hands against your face right here, elbows tight, and you're bobbing and weaving that head. Mainly this is this was made popular by Mike Tyson. So if you see Mike Tyson fight, that's peekaboo style. Basically just up, down. You'll see him moving up and down because you don't wanna, since you are gonna be just like kind of straight right here, if you were fighting somebody, you never want to just stand straight still right there because that's just a facing target um, compared to some other boxing styles. But with this one, it's very good for like getting in, throwing some jabs, and then staying in close to your opponent. Like Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson was much shorter than his opponents. He was like, I think he's like 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, uh, compared, you know, and he was in the heavyweight division. Most of the people he was fighting was six, six foot up. And so his reach was smaller. And so he had to figure out a way to get in inside that pocket, you know. I use all three styles of, of these boxing defenses, but I'm gonna use, you know, I like to make sure I'm training them all, you know, in different ways. So with my pick boost style, it's making sure that you're staying nice and head movement, you know, making sure you're bobbing and weaving. Sometimes I like to throw in a little slip, jab cross slip in, because Mike Tyson was known for doing that. Jab cross slip in, upper cut, stuff like that. But if you want to, you can just start working on your jab jab cross and just work on moving your head. Next one you got some more common style, the Philly roll. Your jab arm is going to be going across your belly, kind of covering all these internal organs right here. You've got your uh, liver right here, kidneys on this side, hands kind of going over the top. Your main strong hand is used to protect your face now, so you're going to keep it up under your chin, kind of like this, but you're going to be sideways to your opponent. That way, you know, the thing, they're, the object they're trying to hit, you don't want to make it like, like this to them. Is it easier to hit this? Or is it easier to hit this? It's easier to hit this, so you don't want to be like this. You want to be sideways and slanted. Even if you're in peekaboo style, you're moving like that. So with this one, the jab will be a little bit different because you've got to pop that foot up a little bit. You don't have to go that high, obviously, with it. But you just kind of have to pop the foot. You can't really see it right now. But that's what's going to open your hand up here. That way you don't have to pull back, if that makes sense. So right here, quick step with your jab and then cross. So working on those, boom, get across. Jab cross and bringing it back. The big thing is working on bringing your hands back to your face. This is a variation of the Philly roll because basically all you're doing is you're going from here to here. I've always called this a 90-90 block. I don't know what other people call it. It's, a lot of people have used this. Basically this is used to get inside or if someone goes on your outside, you see like a hook coming, squeezing down like that. Like say someone's punching me from this side, I would get right here. Or sometimes I like to leech in like this to try and cover some distance between me and the opponent to set up like a hook, kind of like this. I'll go boom, boom, come in right here. Because now his kidney, if this was a person, his kidney would be right here. I can just boom, throw my hip into him. And so you can kind of just play with all three of those. You know, switching in between here from peekaboo, jab across, Philly roll, jab across, and then going from the 90, boom, pop them. You know, just try those out. I'm gonna finish this workout out and then uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow for tomorrow's workout. What's going on guys? It's the next morning. I'm about to head to the gym to go get this morning workout done. Uh, yesterday was a full workout and I feel pretty okay today. I don't feel too sore. I'm pretty tired. Um, when it was time to go to bed yesterday, I passed out because I was just exhausted. Today is gonna be kind of a time scrunch with today's workout. So I'm gonna try and get all the lifting done while I'm at the gym. It's currently like 6 a.m. right now, by the way. And then I'm gonna have a really busy day today and tomorrow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the workout in today and then tomorrow I'm gonna make my rest day for the week because uh, it's been about six days since I've had my rest day. Uh, we're gonna go get this workout in and then after that, uh, we're gonna be focusing a little bit on some kickboxing today, uh, later tonight. Uh, you know, last night we did some boxing drills. We're gonna do a little bit more kicking today. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it, man. Let's get it done.
All right, guys, got the workout done, at least for the morning. Uh, I had to cut out the uh, body weight stuff because I'm just going to end up doing it tonight just because I ran out of time. Um, you'll notice that uh, I didn't do leg extensions. I did like front cable squats uh, just because someone else was on the leg extension machine and I was running out of time. So I just went ahead and did a different quad exercise. But as long as you're hitting the same like muscle groups, it should be fine. But tonight I will be going, at, going ahead and doing some kickboxing training and I'll be filming that for you guys. And then I'll go ahead and have to do the calisthenics also. So so it's gonna be a long day. But uh, I went ahead and ate a protein bar. I already ate it, so I can't show you guys that, but I ate a protein bar. Uh, and now I gotta go to work, but I'll see you guys tonight for the kickboxing training. Okay guys, we are at the night training part. So we're gonna do some kickboxing. Uh, actually, I'm gonna show you guys some kicks. I figured it'd be a good time to review some of the most, one of the most important kicks to, to learn whenever you're first starting to learn how to kickbox. It's the most, the most basic kick. It's gonna help improve all your the strength in all your other kicks. It's gonna help you keep your poise, which if you don't know what poise is, it's your ability to like get hit and like not move. So if this thing hits me, it's my ability to not get like pushed back. Uh, so it'll actually increase your poise as, le as well. And that's very important when you're fighting because you're getting you know, shoved around a lot. Keeping your hands up, we're gonna work on our teeps. A teep is basically you just bring your leg up, knee up, and you stab the bag with your foot. That's what you do. We're just gonna work here, boom. Front teep would be your front leg. Rear teep is gonna be your back leg. Uh, I talked about this in another video, but um, if you're right, just for a general rule of thumb, it's not always like this, but if you're right-handed, put your left foot forward. If you're left-handed, put your right foot forward. It's plain and simple. Uh, and then your front teep will be the front leg, boom. Rear teep, boom. And then obviously, we can throw some combos in here. Jab, cross, boom. Jab, cross, hook. Jab, cross, jab, cross, team. You can get pretty dynamic with it. So I'm gonna do a little bit more work on this. You guys can maybe try that at home. Um, and then I'm gonna go eat because I'm tired and fucking hungry. All right guys, sorry I didn't get a video in before I started my workout. It's been a crazy day, um, but we did get a workout in. I'm about to start my second workout. Um, the thing that made the workout so crazy is my barbell broke. Let's see if I can show you guys real quick. So there's this piece. By the way, this is not supposed to happen, but there's this piece, right? Is this the side? Yeah, look at this. Let's see if I can get a good shot. That's not supposed to move. That moves. I was doing power cleans and that came off. Um, by the way, we got some more weights in here. I had a buddy come by and uh, he dropped off some weights. So now we got these uh, metal plates and we were testing them out and the fucking barbell broke. So we had to switch up the workout. That's why you guys saw me holding those plates doing those lunges because I literally couldn't do barbell lunges like I had planned. So we improvised and uh, we got it done and I'm gonna go ahead and get this next workout in. Um, today I'm just gonna go be going over I don't know. <laughs> I haven't even really thought about it. This day has been so crazy. Maybe we'll work on a few combos, working on kicking and punching at the same time, but let's go ahead and get this done. All right, finished up the calisthenics. We're gonna go ahead and get to this kickboxing. Um, so again, going over some quick three combos. I've been kind of hitting this back just a little bit, playing around with it, but we're gonna work on the day, mainly <clears throat> showing you guys what a roundhouse or a sidekick is. A roundhouse, well, let me show you a sidekick. A sidekick is exactly what it sounds like. You hit the back from the side. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but I would always recommend starting there because the main thing that gets people with this kicking is your shins will start hurting. And yes, it is very normal for your shins to be hurting when you do this. So just make sure don't hit too hard, warm yourself up to it. It may take up to a month before you're even ready to fully kick this thing because it does, it just wears your shins out. But eventually your nerves will deaden in there and you won't feel it as much. So going from that, kicking and just adding a little bit more power. Maybe you can get in some height. And just work on kicking from the side, that's a great way to start. But turn it to a roundhouse, you're doing the same thing. The easy way for me to explain it is you just start off with a knee and then you kick. So you start off acting like you're going for a knee and then you turn it to a side, you know, to a roundhouse. That's why it's called a roundhouse, it's because your knee is going from here and it's going around the house, if that makes sense. That's literally how it was explained to me. Just working on that, sometimes I'll go a jab across side kick, I'll go jab across. Roundhouse, 
just kind of depends. A lot of it has to do with footwork, with stuff I haven't shown you guys yet. So another one I'll go through, and I've kind of shown you guys this already, but the switch kick, which is a really good one to start with because it's easy to build your tension up and you can kind of just feel it naturally how to release your you know, hip tension. So jab, cross, switch your feet and whack that thing. Again, be careful with your shins because if you're not used to it, it's going to hurt. So start off just by like tapping it. Even doing this, if you're new, is a lot. You know, it'll feel, you'll feel it. So take it easy and be safe. What's up guys? It's the next day. Um, we're gonna be working on some back today, I believe. So we're gonna get that done. I actually just got done mowing the yard. That's why I'm out here. Uh, so I got my cardio in, that's for sure. But uh, I am gonna have to work out at the house today. So I'm not gonna be able to use as much weight as I want to. I'm not gonna be able to do all the exercises I wanna do. So you guys are gonna see a little bit of different variations and I might change up the reps a little bit just to make it a little bit harder. Um, but we're gonna get it done. I think we have like three days left in the program. It's wearing me out, y'all. I've been trying my best to get them done and I'm getting them done but I am pushing myself, man. It's just a lot of, it's a lot of volume. I've even forgot to even record a few times. Uh, like, I don't even think I recorded after my workout yesterday. <laughs> just cause I'm so tired, it wears you out, man. Like I said, two day programs is no joke. It's, it's not definitely not something you wanna start with. So don't, I would recommend waiting to do this program if you plan on doing it till you really wanna take it to the next level. Um, because it, it, it's a lot, but I'm really enjoying it. I'm seeing a lot of good results from it. Um, gaining a lot of muscle, gaining a, a lot of strength, uh, and a lot more endurance too. It's just, you know, by the time I'm ready to go to bed, I pass out like that. Like I said, it's great. I'm enjoying it. This is what I was trying to put myself through. So we're going to go ahead and get this back workout in, and then I'll see you guys tonight or after the workout, whatever, if I remember to record after the workout. But if I don't record after the workout, I will see you guys tonight with the kickboxing. So... What's up guys? I'm in the office actually right now, <laughs> but I uh, got done with the work. <coughs> <coughs> but I got done with the workout and I'm um, eating some string cheese post-workout. Um, I don't know if you guys saw me doing those deadlifts, but I had to be very gentle with how I put it down because if I put it down too hard, it was gonna like push all the weight down because there's nothing like holding the weight from coming like towards my hand. So I was trying to at least get the deadlifts in so that way I could get like the heavy weight training in. But I ended up getting like uh, the other exercises in with some kind of variation that I liked a lot. My back feels like it was worked really well. I got the calisthenics in as well. Uh, usually I wait till, what's up Arthur? Arthur's like pulling on me. Hello son. I usually wait till like the nighttime to do my calisthenics, just kind of like to pair it with my kickboxing. But uh, I ended up just getting it all done at once. Arthur's really feeling lovey-dovey today. We'll be going ahead and doing some uh, different, you know, kickboxing stuff again tonight. Um, I don't know what I'm even going to show you. Maybe I'll show you guys the eight count, which is a really good boxing combo to work on just to kind of help you with like, God bless Arthur. I'm trying to talk. But the eight count is something that like helps you with, uh, you know, just working on your like footwork and bobbing and weaving and ducking and uh, all kinds of stuff like that. So I might go ahead and show you guys that. There's Arthur's tail again. But we'll get into that tonight and I'll see you guys there. All right, guys, we're gonna be doing the eight count tonight. That is basically just a boxing combination. I've done this one quite a bit over the years just because it's a good combo to work on your footwork, to work on just getting loose with the movement of the bag. It's a longer combo, so you feel pretty good about yourself after you're getting done with it because most combos are just like four punches. This one's like eight. We're gonna go jab, which is your front hand, jab, cross backhand, hook with the front hand, cross, slip. And a slip, we haven't really covered it, but a slip, you're gonna be, you're pretty much doing a squat and pivot at the same time. This, this is a movement that takes a lot of work, so don't be mad at yourself if you can't get it down. Just work on getting low and getting out of this, you know, center line right here. Like, if the bag's right here, you wanna make sure your head's gonna be over here off to the side. So, we're gonna go jab, cross, hook, cross, slip. Since you're already pivoted, throw that cross, hook, then you're gonna step with the hook, elbow up, throw another hook, and then cross. So I know that's pretty complicated, but that's why we have it on video. I promise you, once you start practicing this, you'll get it down within two or three practices. Just working on it a little bit more like on tempo pace, we're gonna go boom, 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 slip. 
And you can throw an extra jab or two in there just to help steady yourself. That's what that jab's for, is just to pop it, just to help get your distance. So like I said, sometimes when I throw this hook and I'm gonna throw this extra uh, cross, I like to throw an extra jab to give myself some distance. That way I can throw the full extension of that cross rather than getting caught up like right here and only getting halfway with that cross, so. All right guys, day five of the Baki program. So, so far so good. I'm feeling a little sore. Been a lot of legs actually. Today we've got shoulders and traps. So I'm actually feeling pretty good about it. I'm actually gonna be going to the gym today. That way I can use their weight because it'll be a little bit easier. Cause again, I don't have a barbell, so I can't do any military press or anything like that. I'm actually really enjoying this program. It's the only thing that sucks is that it takes so much time. It takes at least three hours of your day away. So probably next week, I'm probably gonna do something a little bit lighter, but uh, I do really enjoy the program. Maybe sometime whenever I have more time on my hands, I'll actually do it again because I would like to like, maybe do this type of program for like a month or two months and see what happens. But we've only got one more day after this, so we're almost done with the program. I'm really happy with it. It's it's gonna get a super high rating for me, um, but let's go ahead and get this workout done and then I'll see you guys after the workout uh, and show you guys what I'm eating. All right, guys, post-workout. It's pretty damn good workout. Got some good lifting in. I got some rotisserie chicken for post-workout. Good. No, Sora. No. Get out of my kitchen. Yeah, you asshole. Workout wasn't that bad. I didn't have time for the cow so We'll do that tonight when I do my kickboxing. Tonight on the kickboxing, we are going to be going over some ladder drills. Not as much like MMA stuff as much as it's more cardio s but it's something you have to be able to do in order to get the feet work right. We're gonna do some footwork drills for our feet for boxing and kickboxing, therefore martial art training. There you go, that's what we're gonna do. <sighs> All right guys, I know this is a weird angle, but just kind of bear with me. I've got a ladder here, uh, it's not a very long ladder. I actually got this for five bucks. But this is gonna do just fine. I'm gonna show you guys three different ladder drills to help work with footwork. Footwork is super important when you're talking about boxing, but especially when it comes to kickboxing because in boxing, not only do you have to have your feet set up a certain way to go ahead and make sure you're, you know, throwing these punches right, but then you gotta start worrying about like these kicks and your foot position will matter a whole bunch whenever you're doing that. So we're gonna be going over, like I said, three different ones. These, all three of these aren't necessarily something you would practically use in a fight. Uh, only one of them really are, but they're gonna get you used to moving your feet really quickly and very dynamically in different directions. So we'll go ahead and hop into it. This is basically gonna run from easiest to hardest. Um, I don't have a lot of room here to film with. I usually do these outside. This is just the best angle I can get to film. Uh, but we're gonna start off with the easiest one. This one I like to call hopscotch because it's exactly what it looks like, or what it sounds like. You're gonna start with your feet in, out and in, out and in, out and in. And just making sure every time your feet touch the ground, you're moving these feet right back up. So it's your ability to be able to touch the ground and come right back up. So pull, 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 pull. Now you don't have to go backwards like I do, but this is the next step for the difficulty. From here, going into the next hardest one is the shuff, uh, shuffle. Basically you're going Pound, pound, step, pound, pound, step, pound, pound, step, pound, pound, step, pound, pound. So every time I say pound, one foot's going in, in, and then you're stepping over. Boom, 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 and then you can speed it up. Boom, 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 down. And the thing is what you're trying to do is not let your head get in front of your body because I almost did it that time. If you lean too far forward, you'll notice like, I'm gonna try and do it on purpose, but if you lean too far forward, blah, 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 you're gonna fall forward out of the track. So anytime you mess up, start over and just start again. And then go on to the most difficult one. This is something I actually use like in fights. Um, so I really just call this one the corner step because it's gonna make your feet look like it's like going in, out, and then you're going forward. One foot in, one foot out. Both feet in, one foot out, and then as soon as this one's in the middle, step up. Boom, 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 step up. Boom, 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 step up. Like I said, this one is definitely gonna be the hardest one 
Um, so, you know, take your time. You don't have to immediately do this first day. Um, and, if, and when you do try it out, I highly recommend going at my tempo like I just did there. Boom, boom, boom. And just kind of walk it out. Your feet will recognize the pattern over a certain amount of time as long as you're doing it right. And then if you're doing it right and you keep doing it over and over again, even if you're just going this slow, you know, even if you're going at this pace, your feet will remember the pattern. And so eventually you can start speeding it up a little bit, start looking something like that, boom, 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 and just kind of, you know, I'm working it through there. And where I would use this in a fight, you really won't be able to see my feet much. Now my left foot's forward, just like an orthodox fighter would be, but where I would use this is for say something like a switch kick, and the switch kick on the switch is over, boom, boom. You know, or I'll use this to cut somebody off. So like say someone's traveling out to the outside, I want to cut them off right there, boom, throw an uppercut cross, switch my feet back, you know, there's a bunch of different ways you can just kind of throw this little switch and 90 degree pivot because it's going to turn you about 90 degrees, you know, and you can do it any way, boom, and step back, you know. I'm sweating already really bad. We're going to get something to eat and I'm going to see you guys tomorrow for the last day of the workout. All right, guys, last day of training. I'm really honestly just tired at this point. <laughs> Oh, it's been, this, this program has been kicking my ass, but we've almost got it done. We've almost got it done. We've just got to do, I know for sure we're going to do some snatches today, which I love. I do like, enjoy doing those Olympic lifting movements uh, just because they're fun. And then we got to do the main thing that gets me so bad, are those calisthenics, because you do it whenever you're just like already done with the workout and you're tired. But me sitting here complaining about it, it's not going to get it done any faster. So let's go ahead and get it done. Uh, and then we'll review the program. All right, post-workout, I'm worn out. We've got some tuna, or I think it's mahi ahi. I don't know, it's some fish. We have fish uh, with some Chick-fil-A sauce on it. Doesn't sound great, but it's honestly really, really good. Um, I'm gonna eat this, and then we've just got, there's a, there's a, there was a bug on my food. Then we've just got the kickboxing workout, and then we're done with the program. I'm gonna go ahead and rate the program right now, 9.5 solidly. The only things I would have to say is the two-a-days really wear me out. It's hard to pick up the motivation for the two-a-day workout at the end. Uh, and then obviously I don't stretch at the beginning of the workouts. I always wait till the end of the workouts to stretch. Uh, but that's literally all I have to say about that. Everything else was fantastic. It's a great program. I really see myself doing this later on, but we have other programs to get to, so uh, maybe later. But I'm gonna get this in me and then we're gonna finish up the program tonight. All right, guys, we're on the last workout of this Baki program. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna have fun. We're just gonna whack on this bag for a little bit, make it a full workout, and we're gonna call it a day. all we got for the Baki program. I hope you guys enjoyed the program. I had a great time doing it. Leave a comment down below on the next program you guys want me to do. But until then, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.